All right, let's talk about the Vim text editor. The Vim text editor has been sort of the editor of choice for developers using Linux for a very, very long time. It's considered a modal text editor, and that's because the mode that you are in determines the output of the characters that you type on your keyboard. We're going to be talking about a few things regarding Vim, just a very basic beginning tutorial on how to use Vim so that you are armed and equipped, ready to go for your class here at Alta 3. So let's go ahead and start with a test document. We'll go ahead and call it test.txt and we'll load up into Vim with that command, vim space test.txt. This is creating for us a new file which we're calling test.txt. The first thing you'll notice is that if we were to begin typing random letters, oh, I accidentally typed an I, but traditionally you would find that you're having a hard time typing anything into the prompt. Uh, that's because we're not in an insert mode. Rather, we are in a command mode. Whenever you load up Vim, you're loading up into the command mode. So what we need to do is enter insert mode in order to begin typing our document. We could do this by pressing the I key. And as you can see at the bottom left hand corner of the application, it says insert. We may now freely type. In order to leave insert mode, simply press escape. And now insert has disappeared. Now the big thing that causes people problems with Vim is trying to understand how to quit Vim uh, while saving or not saving, what have you. In order to do that, we begin with a colon. Just type shift colon, and you'll have a colon there at the bottom left hand corner of your screen. At this point, you can do a couple different things, but right now we're just focusing on quitting out of Vim. In order to quit out of Vim while saving your changes, you're going to start with a W, which stands for write. And then you're going to finish with a Q, which stands for quit. So this command that we're sending to Vim is write the file, then quit the application. So we'll go ahead and press enter and we are out. We can now go ahead and see how we're doing. Did this file actually get made? Well, we'll go ahead and just simply cat the file, cat test.txt, and we may now freely type is displayed. That is what we saved with our Vim editor. Amazing. Let's go back into Vim, and now let's do a couple other things, but this time I'm going to need to remove my webcam so you can see what's going on. Behind where I used to be, you might notice that there is a number one comma 23. That is telling me the location of my cursor. So I move it left, you notice that the column number, the number to the right of the comma, is going down. And as I go to the right, you notice that it is now counting up. Let's go ahead and get back into insert mode. And let's take a look at that left number as I enter through the document. As I'm entering through the document, you can tell that I am increasing that number to the left of the comma. That is the row or the line number. Very helpful if you're diagnosing a problem or trying to figure out what's wrong in a document when you get a line error 25. You can look at 25 immediately and go, oh, there it goes, I missed a parentheses or I missed a comma or uh, there's a syntax error here, etc." Very, very helpful when coding or taking a look at various YAML files if you're taking a Kubernetes course, etc. Now, let's talk about something else that's very, very important when you're dealing with our labs here at Alta 3. Chances are you're going to have a few labs that have very, very lengthy commands. Uh, some of them will have you uh, getting a file uh, from the internet, etc. Maybe even copying YAML manifests or lines of code. And it might just be a bit too problematic to just manually type it all yourself. I don't blame you. How do we do that here? Well, while we're in Vim, we can actually paste lines of text from somewhere else on the site. So for example, we can go ahead and copy right from our lecture, west of house, you are standing in an open field west of a white house with a boarded front door. 
there is a small mailbox here. Well, guess what? We're going to click this right here at the top. It says copied. And now we're going to go back to our terminal window. And we're going to press Control Shift V. And that will paste those lines of text into our document. Now you could do this even at the command line, which is using it here in Vim as an example. You can also press Shift Insert. And that will have the exact same effect. Now let's say, for example, I then came in here and made a bunch of changes to my code. Bunch, bunch of errors, because we're making errors here. Don't know what I did, okay? And after realizing we made big mistakes, we might want to quit without saving. We don't want to save the changes that we made. Hey, you know, when we got a bunch of errors and I don't know what I did, it's probably not a bad idea. So we'll go ahead and begin by entering command mode by pressing shift colon. And if you look there at the bottom left, we are in command mode yet again. We're going to press Q, which means quit. But if you notice, if I just press Q and then enter, it'll say no write since last change. This is because the people behind the Vim text editor wanted to make sure that you never closed uh, your document without saving your changes unless you really wanted to close without saving changes. So what we're going to do is we're going to do this again, colon, Q, but this time we're going to put a bang or an exclamation point at the end. And with that, we will close without any changes being saved whatsoever. We may now freely type. That's it for Vim. Enjoy the rest of your class.